यथा विनिमय यथात्रि सर्गो मेषा स्वेन सदा निरास्त कुहकं सत्यम परम धीमहि O oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O oh, all pervading personality, God. Oh, oh, from my respectful base, it is unto you. Oh, my respectful base. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna. And the primary cause of all causes. And the primary cause of all causes. The creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. The creation, sustenance, and destruction. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. He is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the modes of material nature, I'm sorry, temporarily manifested by the three modes of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Votra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Paramo nirmatsaranam. Vedyam vastamam atra vastu. Vedyam vastamam. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapa trayon. Shimad bhagavate mahamani krite. Shimad bhagavate mahamani. Kim vapurir ishvarha. Sadyo hridi avruddite tra. Sadyo hridi avruddite tra. Krite bihe susu sabistakshan. Completely reject all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understood by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from the illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Nigama kalpaturur galitam. Sukumaka damrita drabi samitam. Pipata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska bhuvibhavu kaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish shimad bhagavatam. O expert and relish shimad bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sisukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls, Shinvatam Swakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Vidyantak Stohi Bhadrani, we do not to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, 
Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava, kamalo badayas chayi, chete tare navidam, stitvam satve prasiditi. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manasu, Bhagavat bhakti yogitaha, Bhagavat tattva vijnanam, Muktasanga shijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarva samsaya siyante chasikarmani jista evatmanishwari. Thus, bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagran. Understanding of the supreme person, of the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 16, verse number 8. Nakashchin riyate tavad. Yavat asta ihan tahka Yavat asta ihan Etad artam hi bhagavan Ahuta paramar sibihi Ahuta paramar sibihi Aho ni loke pieta Haridi Lam Ritam Bacha. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. As long as Yamaraja, who causes everyone's death, is present here, no one shall meet with death. The great sages have invited the controller of death, Yamaraja, who is the representative of the Lord. Living beings who are under the grip under his grip, should take advantage by hearing the deathless nectar in the form of this narration of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Every human being dislikes meeting death, but he does not know how to get rid of death. The surest remedy for avoiding death is to accustom oneself to hearing the nectarine pastimes of the Lord, as they are systematically narrated in the text of Srimad Bhagavatam. It is advised herein, therefore, that any human being who desires freedom from death should take to this course of life as recommended by the Rishis headed by Sonika. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here it's very clear that hearing the deathless nectar in the form of this narration of transcendental pastimes to the Lord is the solution if one wants to get out of the grip of death. In fact, also it says, therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotees 
in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of Krishna. And it's a science. It's more of a science than the so-called science of the speculator, theoretical physicists, and nuclear science, and philosophers, and so forth. Much more of a science. Why? Because real science was true in the past, true today, will be true in the future, and true everywhere in the universe, the material universe and the spiritual universe. That's science. What they propose as science today is junk. Junk is something you throw away, get rid of it, because it's a nuisance. But yet, they've embraced this junk, and instead of embracing the real nectar at the lotus feet of Krishna, they're drinking the poison of modern science, TikTok, and all that nonsense. You know this, this TikTok? Is, you know, it's all nonsense. There's nothing real about it. It's all make-believe junk. So, nobody likes death, but nobody knows how to get rid of it. <laughs> That's the problem. And therefore, they say, well, it's, it's part of life. No, it's not. Life is eternal. It's not part of life. And Prabhupada says, the surest remedy for avoiding death is to accustom oneself to hearing the nectarian pastimes of the Lord as they are systematically narrated in the text of Srimad Bhagavatam. So this Bhagavatam is what you call the Amala Purana, because there's no mistakes in it. Maybe in some other scriptures, there might be some little mistakes. There are no mistakes in this Purana. And Purana means uh, ancient history. So it's telling the history of Krishna's pastimes uh, in his different incarnations in this world. And it's advised that any human being who desires freedom from death should take to this course of life as recommended by the Rishis headed by Sonaka. So these are the real authorities. Sukadev Goswami, Sutta Goswami, Sonaka Rishi. These are the real uh, experts, scientists. And then there's Bhisma Pitamaha, and there's Mother Kunti, and there's uh, Yudhisthir, and there's Parikshit. These are the real scientists because what they're speaking is eternally true everywhere. That's science. Not true in a particular range of parameters. No, that's not science. That's, that's partial, very partial, partial uh, facts that may permit you to make things, little inventions, so-called, but it's not science in the, in the true sense of the word. So, therefore, the real solution to the problems of life is to become Krishna conscious. Then all the problems of life will go away, or at least you'll be able to tolerate them without being disturbed and continue your dev devotional service so you can go back to Godhead. So what's interesting is that some of the people who are considered the greatest scientists in the modern world had very little understanding of Krishna. One example is Einstein. He was a speculator about the material universe and a speculator about God. In fact, he promoted speculation. And he, and he, and he says it openly. So, but on the other hand, he was a little bit honest because he said, what we see in the universe is so vast and so perfectly synchronized and functioning by laws that we're just amazed by it. And we don't really understand it. We have a little bit of understanding of it, not much. So in that sense, he was a little bit honest. But when it came to God, he was 
skeptical of a personal God. He didn't believe that God's a person. His conception of God was the God of Spinoza, who was a, another speculating philosopher that was, appeared sometime 14th century, I think, in the Netherlands. And he thought that God is impersonal. It's not a person. So here we see one speculator being influenced by another speculator and another speculator and another speculator. And so they have a disciplic succession of speculators. <laughs> you see, we don't have... We don't have a disciplic succession of speculators. We have a disciplic succession of authorities because they accept the original authority, Krishna. That is explained in Bhagavad Gita, where the fourth chapter, Krishna explains, Imam vivasvate yogam praktavam aham avyayam. Vidraswan manave praha manu ikswaka. So it says, the person I got at Lord Sri Krishna said, I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god, Vivaswana. And Vivaswana instructed it to Manu. And Manu, the father of mankind. And Manu, in turn, instructed it to Ikswaku, who was the first king of the solar dynasty on the earth. So this is, uh, uh, therefore, the disciplic succession is coming from Krishna himself, who's the greatest authority, who's the supreme personality of Godhead. There's no one equal to or greater than him. That, that's something that we have to be convinced of. Uh, if we're not convinced of that, then we go nowhere spiritually. And this is a problem with most people like Einstein and others. They refuse to accept that God is a person. And because of that, their whole speculation about, Einstein, about God went nowhere. They, they didn't know more than anybody else. Even the guy on the street knew maybe more than uh, Einstein because at least they had faith, a little bit of faith that God is a person and his son is Jesus or his prophet is Muhammad or his prophet or the, is Abraham or Isaac or whatever. So this is all due to the fact that they're engaged in sense gratification. Nunam pramata kurute vikarma yad indriya pritaya apnoti, apridnoti, nasadu yata atmanoyam asan apiklesida asadeha. People are mad after sense gratification, and they do not know that this present body, which is full of miseries, is a result of one's fruitive activities in the past. Although this body is temporary, it is always giving one trouble in many ways. Therefore, to act for sense gratification is not good. One is considered to be a failure in his life as long as he makes no inquiry about the, his real identity. So Einstein did not make any real attempt to understand what is his real identity. That's why Lord Chaitanya explained in a simple line, uh, said that uh, uh, what is the real nature of the human being is the eternal servant of Krishna. Say. So in that one little line, in that one little phrase, Lord Chaitanya summed up who we are. And Einstein, although he was trying to, he was writing all these amazing formulas to try and understand how nature is working, he couldn't figure out who he is. He thought, after death, there's nothing. He thought that there's no personal God. He thought that we are independent in this world. There's no such thing as uh, uh, being answerable to a supreme person. And he, he thought that everything is causal, is cause and effect that controls everything and that people do not have free will. These are all things that he believed, and he preached it to others and convinced many other people that th there's no free will. We're being forced to act. Well, that's not really true. We are being forced to act as long as we're engaged in sense gratification. 
But there is free will. And because there's free will, anybody, anytime, even the worst sinner, if they surrender to Krishna, they can be purged of uh, all the reactions to their sinful activities so that they can engage in devotional service and they have a chance to go back to Godhead. The only thing that's not regulated by the law of karma is surrender to Krishna. Anybody, anywhere can surrender to the Lord in spite of all their bad karma. So, in, in the, this part of the Bhagavatam continues, therefore to act for sense gratification is not good. One is considered to be a failure in life as long as he makes no inquiry about his real identity. As long as he does not know his real identity, he has to work for fruitive results for sense gratification. And as long as one is engrossed in the consciousness of sense gratification, one has to transmake, transmigrate from one body to another. Although the mind may be engrossed in fruitive activities and influenced by ignorance, one must develop a love for devotional service to Vasudeva. Only then can one have the opportunity to get out of the bondage of material existence. And then Prabhupada said, that, those are the verses from the fifth canto, fifth chapter, fourth to sixth verse. And Prabhupada says, therefore, jnana or knowledge that one is not this material body, but spirit soul, is not sufficient for liberation. So, Einstein didn't even get there. He didn't even understand that there's a difference between the body and the soul. He insisted, like, like so-called Spinoza, who he claimed was the greatest philosopher in the history of mankind, which is nonsense. Spinoza was saying, the body and the soul are one. <laughs> so there's, there's not that they're two different things. They're the same thing. So that means that Spinoza and uh, Einstein and all the people that believe they're nonsense are uh, completely in ignorance. They think there's no difference between the body and the soul. <clears throat> and even if you understand the difference between the body and the soul, that's not enough. That's not su sufficient for liberation. That's what it's saying here. One must, or one has to act in the status of spirit soul. Otherwise, there's no escape from material bondage. So this is the problem of the Mayavadis. They think, oh, now I know Brahman, so I don't have to worship deities. Although so that's for the sentimental dummies who don't, who can't in meditate like me on the on the uh, impersonal, uh, non uh, non personal reality. That's nonsense. You know, say. This one person who became a uh, a uh, Brahma Kumari came up to me after he was coming to the temple all the time. And after a long time, he came to the temple just for a little visit, you know. And I said, hey, what happened to you? I don't see you anymore. Oh, uh, I, I got a better guru than your guru. I said, well, how do you know it's a guru and not a kangaroo? He said, you know, you always make fun of people, but that's not the right way to be. You know, you have to be above that. You have to respect other people. I said, well, I respect you because Krishna is in your heart, but I don't respect your so-called better guru. He's, he's, a, he's better nonsense, yes, but not a better guru because he's teaching you everything that's false. He said, no, 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 he's teaching me the truth. He said, you're all sentimental people. You have to worship this, these idols. But I'm above that. No, I, 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 I can see the light. <laughs> I said, well... Every time you see the light, the light is turned off and you're in darkness, you know, profound darkness. I said, you know, you're, you're, you're pathetic. You know, you have given up the truth to follow some phony nonsense that's going to lead you to nowhere. Anyway, you know, they, they don't know how to hear because they've been poisoned with this Mayavad nonsense. And that's why Lord Chaitanya say my. If you take the trouble to understand Mayavad philosophy, you'll never understand Krishna consciousness. Never. And that's a fact. And there's an example right there, right in front of my eyes. I saw what he was, what Lord Chaitanya was talking about. Here's a person who can never understand Krishna. So it's very sad. 
But we should be able to speak boldly to these type of people, not be afraid. It's no question we're insulting them. They're insulting Krishna. So one has to act in the status of spiritual. In other words, without coming to the point of, of engaging in devotional service, all the theoretical knowledge is nothing, zero, nada, uh, useless. That's not sufficient for liberation, as Prabhupada is saying here. Action in Krishna consciousness is not, however, action on the fruitive platform. Activities performed in full knowledge strengthen one's advancement in real knowledge. Full knowledge means you know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality Godhead. So that strengthens one's advancement in real knowledge. Without Krishna consciousness, mere renunciation of fruit of activities does not actually purify the heart of a conditioned soul. As long as the heart is not purified, one has to work on the fruitive platform. But action in Krishna consciousness automatically helps one escape the result of fruit of action so that one need not descend into the material platform. Therefore, action in Krishna consciousness is always superior to renunciation, which always entails a risk of falling. Renunciation without Krishna consciousness is incomplete, as is confirmed by Srila Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 2 258. Prapachinkataya budya hari sambandhu vastana mukshubi paritya jo vairagyam falgu katyate. When persons eager to achieve liberation renounce things related to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, like deity worship, like hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, like engaging in devotional service, cooking nice uh, preparations and offering them to Krishna with love and devotion. Anything in connection to Krishna is the truth. Anything not connected to Krishna is nonsense. So renunciation is, is complete when it is in the knowledge that everything in existence belongs to the Lord and that no one should claim proprietorship over anything. One should understand that factually nothing belongs to anyone. Then where is the question of renunciation? One who knows that everything is Krishna's property is always situated in renunciation. Since everything belongs to Krishna, everything should be employed in the service of Krishna. This perfect form of action in Krishna consciousness is far better than any amount of artificial renunciation by a sannyasi of the Mayavadi school. Here it is, very clear. And this Mayavadi school, whether it's Mr. Spinoza, spin, spin expert, spinning nonsense, or it's uh, uh, Sadhananda Yogendra and all the modern Mayavadis, they are materialists, they're not spiritualists. Uh, a real person who pursues knowledge of, of Brahman is a spiritualist, but a person who's a Mayavadi is not a spiritualist. Although they talk about spiritual things, they quote the Shastras. In fact, uh, I was looking up something on the internet and I came across this. The whole explanation of uh, Vedanta Sutra by Sankaracharya. And there it clearly says, Jiva becomes Paramatma. <laughs> and and the whole thing about Bhagavad Gita is explained that Jiva never becomes Paramatma. Jiva is always subordinate to Paramatma. Paramatma is an expansion of Krishna. We're also an expansion of Krishna, but we are infinitely small, and Krishna is infinitely great in all his, in all his expansions, all his plenary expansions are. So this idea that at some point the Jivatma becomes Paramatma is nonsense. It's, 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 it's a, again, false instructions, even though the Mayavadis are studying the Vedanta. But with the commentary of Sankaracharya, one's, one ends up with this nonsensical understanding that puts one in a dead end. A dead end is a street you go into with your car, your bicycle, you walk into thinking it's going to lead to somewhere, but it leads to a dead end. And, and it's not going to take you anywhere. So this Mayavad philosophy is a big dead end in life. 
And unless we people realize that, they become illusioned like Einstein did and others who follow Mayavadis. So here in, in the uh, 13th chapter, uh, Krishna tells Arjuna, Chetrag Chetrag Gayor Evam Antaram Yana Chaksusa Uta Pakriti Moksham Cha Ye Vidur Yantate Param. Those who see with eyes of knowledge the difference between the body and the knower of the body and can also understand the process of liberation from bondage and material nature attain to the supreme goal. So Einstein clearly said that he believes what Spinoza was teaching that the body and the mind and the body and the soul are one. And here Krishna is saying, you have to see the difference between the body and the knower of the body, who is the soul and the super soul. Right? Then one can understand the process of liberation from bondage and material nature and attain to the supreme goal. So therefore, Mayavad philosophy always leads to a deaf, dead end. Here, in Prabhupada, in uh, uh, February 5th, 1970, he wrote a letter to someone called Anil Grover. And he said, the soul is different than the body. It is not exactly a combination, but it is an engagement. In other words, the body and the soul never mix, really. They never become chemically bonded or anything like that. It's simply that the body covers the soul. There's, it's not a combination. So there are two different things forever. So therefore, Prabhupada says, one can understand that this body is matter. It can be analyzed with its 24 elements. The body is the gross manifestation, and the subtle manifestation is the mind and psychological effects. And the symptoms of life are therefore interactions of these features. But over and above this, there is the soul. There is also the super soul. The soul and the super soul are two. This material world is working by the combination of the soul and the 24 material elements. So here, Prabhupada clearly says it's not exactly a combination. They never combine. He's just using that word because people understand it. But he, he, he clearly says in many places it's not really a combination because the soul is different than the body. <clears throat> These things are meant for contemplation and for realization, and one should have a complete understanding of this chapter with the help of the spiritual master is talking about chapter 13. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? Soul and the matter together. Example like the oil and the water. No matter together. It's like a husband and wife. Yeah. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they can both become devotees, then they and they're better off. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. You have to put that right after the RT is over, you have to put it there. Uh, right after all the singing, everything's done. You should put it right there so any anyone who asks a question they can come up and speak. Or you get the you get the remote mic. Okay, so then that's all right. That's all right. Then use this. As soon as all the singing is done, put the mic in place. So speak into the mic. It just uh, I would like you to speak. Be speak a bit more on this statement of the sages on the Misharanya, that um yeah it is advised here and therefore that any human being who desires freedom from death uh, should take to this cause of life as recommended by the rishis said it by Shanoka. So what they're talking about is systematically Hearing the narration of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Systematically. Exactly. So, that as, well, as we're doing here, verse by verse. Mm. So that, okay. Mm. 
the surest remedy, the surest remedy to avoid death or to become deathless is hearing the deathless nectar in the form of the narration of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. The surest remedy for avoiding death is to accustom oneself to hearing the nectarian pastimes of the Lord as they are systematically narrated in the text of Srimad Bhagavatam. Systematically, that means verse by verse, mm. canto by canto. Yeah, so why is it difficult for people in general, actually, to, um, to admit this? I mean, it, False ego. it doesn't, for them it's a war. Really, I become free from death just by hearing. <laughs> it's the false ego. They, they think that, see, here's the thing, and th this you have to understand. Our people don't understand it. The whole educational system in the United States, in Europe, in Australia, in, everywhere, in India, is based on atheistic humanism. Einstein himself was a humanist. Mm. What does it mean, humanist? It means that you reject the existence of God. And you, you, the only way you can understand who you are and what life is all about is through science, logic, and reasoning. And, and they reject superhuman uh, beings or, or God. And, and, they, and they use speculation to understand, to try and understand things. See, and this is what the, the whole educational, you have to understand, the whole educational system in the United States, in India, all over the world is this atheistic humanism. So there's no way a person can escape it. They're going to convince you after 12 or, or 20 years of going to school that there is no God. If, if you believe in God, it's only like candy. It makes you feel good. But it doesn't do anything for you. In fact, it might even poison you in a sense because of the white sugar. But it's, it's not, I mean, if, if you feel better, then okay, you can, you know, go to church and do all those little things that they do and hear all those stories from the Bible. But uh, the real thing is science. And empirical knowledge. That's humanism. You, just, you should read about it. You, know? you can look it up on the internet. You'll see that the whole educational system is based on that theory. Yeah, the leaders, they said, I heard Joe Biden saying yesterday, I just opened up, you know, and computer and so. Speaking in the mic. Oh, sorry. Joe Biden is a leader. You know, he wants to be leader. And, and they say that people ask questions about the COVID-19, you know, about the well-being of people, is it, you just believe in the scientists. There you go. <laughs> Boldly, and then he's very proud of it, and he's saying it really. And what, what does Trump say? You know what Trump says? Don't be afraid of this COVID. Right. <laughs> Don't be afraid of it. You can beat it. He's trying to challenge, you know, what's uh, yeah, your energy, you know? Yeah. And Biden, he had listened to the scientists. And, and he'll say that for everything. Right? And they're leaders. The Mis scientists no, no, they're misleaders. misleaders. Exactly. But um, I mean, the so called leaders, they, yeah. they're blind, yeah? And the blind leading the. Blind leading the blind, everybody mm. falls into a ditch. Mm. Unfortunately. Yeah. Jay. Hari Ball, thank you. All glory is to Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai.